Well, hey guys, it's Darwin, and today I wanna to talk about two ultralight tents that I've recently been testing and using in the field, the Durston XMID Pro 1 versus the Z-Pax Offset Solo. What makes them similar? What makes them different? The pros and cons of each, and which tent I think is better. Now, if you have been watching my videos over the past seven years, it is no secret that I am a big fan of Z-Pax tents. I have bought and owned a lot of these. I've put thousands of miles on them and they've never let me down. So like most through hikers, I live by the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And over the years, even though there's been tons of other tents that have come out to the market, I've not been interested in trying them because I always use what I know is gonna work for me for months on end. Well, one of those brands that has really blown up over the last handful of years that I get a lot of suggestions uh, to check out is Durston, specifically the X-Mid tents. Now, Durston makes a bunch of different versions of this tent from a two-person to a one-person, sill poly version to a DCF version, a double wall to a single wall. But the one that I have been interested in checking out was the X-Mid Pro 1, specifically because it has the features that I'm looking for in a tent. It's a one-person tent made out of DCF, and that's what I'm used to using. So back in November, I decided to borrow this from a friend and I've been using it on multiple trips and testing it ever since because I wanted to get it out on the trail. I wanted to put it through its paces, spend multiple nights in it and see what all of the hype has been about Durston tents. Well, while I've been testing this, a couple months ago, the brand that I'm the most familiar with, z -Packs, put out a new shelter that's very similar called the Offset Solo. And I saw a lot of people saying that these were two very close competitors because they were very similar with their features. So I decided to also pick up an Offset Solo so I could put these head to head and see which one I would prefer, especially being someone that has owned so many Z-Pax tents. Is this better or is this better for me? So before I get into the review, I am not sponsored by either of these companies. Uh, Durston nor z -Packs asked me to make this video. All of the thoughts and opinions in this video are my own and based off of my own personal experience. And remember that all gear is subjective. You gotta use what's gonna work for you. That being said, this video is still sponsored. Yep, I'm doing a sponsored video. And it's not by either of these gear companies, it's by the company that has allowed me to get out on some of these trips recently put some of this gear through the test, log some miles and not get lost while I'm out on the trail. Today's video is sponsored by Onyx Backcountry. Over the past year, I've been getting out on a lot of smaller backpacking trips and section hikes versus these long through hikes. So I'm not sticking to these main trails, getting off and doing my own routes. And Onyx has been a really great tool to allow me to plan and route my trip from home and get all my logistics and then use it offline while I'm out on the trail to navigate. Not only has Onyx become a great tool for me in my kit out on the trail for navigation, they've also become a huge supporter of my channel, allowing me to get out on trips like the recent one I just did out on the PCT and make videos like this. Because I've recently partnered with Onyx, if you're thinking about streamlining your trip planning and navigation while you're out on trail and picking up something like Onyx Backcountry, if you use my link down in the description box, you can get 20% off of a subscription to Onyx. Again, I can't thank Onyx enough for making an awesome navigation app and for supporting what I do here on YouTube. All right, guys, so before uh, I talk about what I like and don't like about both of these tents and which one that I would buy, let's go over the specs. The Durston X-Mid Pro is a one-person, two-trekking pole tension tent that is made out of a Dyneema composite fabric, and the model that I have has the sill nylon floor, but you can get it with a Dyneema floor. It's fully enclosed with two D-shaped zipper doors and two vestibules. It has a bunch of little features like dual wall pockets, magnetic door toggles, and vents at the two peaks to help with condensation. But the feature that makes this tent the most unique amongst other tents out on the market is its asymmetrical offset pole design that claims to create more internal headroom and overall living space. The weight on the version that I have is 17 ounces on my scale and at the time of this video, 
the retail price comes out to $549. Next up is the Z-Pax Offset Solo. It is also a one person, two trekking pole tension tent that is made out of a Dyneema composite fabric, but comes standard with a Dyneema bathtub floor. It's also fully enclosed, features two L-shaped zipper doors, double vestibules, magnetic door toggles, and dual peak vents. The offset solo is also an asymmetrical design, but it's quite different in the fact that instead of having offset poles, it has an offset peak, allowing it to have more internal living space. The offset also comes with this little 32 inch pole for the foot in to extend the length and again, give it more internal space. On my scale, the offset solo comes out to 19 ounces. And at the time of this video, the retail price is $749. So when I first got these tents, uh, again, I thought that they were very similar tents because they looked similar. They had similar features, but after getting these out on multiple nights, I now know that they are very different in a lot of ways. And what makes these tents very similar is the fact that both tent manufacturers are after the same thing, making a one person tent have a ton of internal living room. So I could start talking about all the small little features and the bells and whistles that I like and that I don't like about these tents. But in the grand scheme of things, when I'm looking at a shelter, there are three main things that it comes down to for me and what makes a perfect tent. Number one is the setup, the actual usability of the tent. How much room does it have on the inside and how simple is the design? I want something that's not gonna break and fail on me in the field. So first off, let's go with setup. Both of these tents were very easy to set up. Both of them pitched nicely after I figured out how to do both of them. Because when you first get a trekking pole tent, it takes a little bit to kind of figure out that pitching method, but once you get it figured out, you know how to do it. Uh, the Offset Solo has a very standard footprint size, pretty similar to most of the one-person tents that I have, and the Xmid Pro has a much larger footprint. So as far as the room that you're setting it up in, the Offset Solo can definitely be squeezed into much smaller spaces. When I was through hiking the PCT and the Continental Divide Trail, I had to pitch my tent in a lot of spaces where there were a lot of big boulders or trees that I had to kind of fit in these small spaces. And I feel like I could still do that with this pretty easily. With the Durston, I feel like uh, I need a much larger room to be able to pitch this because it does have a very large footprint because the fly is a big rectangle, but the inside is slanted of where you actually lay. So you kind of have to have a little bit more room to work with when you're pitching this. So as far as, uh, the amount of space to pitch it and kind of fitting it in, I'm gonna to have to give that to the offset solo. Now, when it comes to pitching it and getting it taut, uh, what I found with pitching both of these tents was once I got this figured out and I, I figured out my angle and how much space I needed, I was able to easily get this staked out, slap trekking poles in it, tension it, and it was perfectly taut, ready to get in and go to bed. The offset solo took a little bit more time even though it was pretty straight on, I could lay on it, find my flat spot, get it staked out. It took a little bit longer to get it taut because it has that extra pull. There's an extra tension point that you have to worry about when you're trying to get the entire tent taut. So sometimes I would get some of it taut and then other walls would be kind of floppy. So it took a little bit longer to get this taut. So as far as uh, ease of pitching and how fast you can get it taut, I'm gonna have to give that to the X-Mid Pro. Next, let's talk about internal room. Again, both of these tents are very big on the inside because of that asymmetrical design on both of them trying to accomplish the same thing, but very different. The Durston X-Mid Pro, what I found, has a ton of foot and headroom. Honestly, the most I've ever had in any one person tent. I didn't even get close to the walls, head and foot, but the actual internal width was very narrow. It kind of felt a little bit like a coffin. It's one of the reasons it reminds me of my Skyscape Trekker. But all of the width seems to be in the vestibules. The vestibules are very, very large. There actually might be more width in both of the vestibules than there is on the internal width of the tent. 
For me, I'm not somebody that keeps my gear in my vestibule. I like to keep it in the tent. So I wish that this had a little bit more width internally and less in the vestibule or the offset. Solo has a fair amount of room in the head and the foot end. I found that the foot length was more than the head. I still felt like the wall was a little close to my face on the head end, but I did appreciate having this to get that wall off to make sure that my, uh, my foot box of my quilt didn't touch the wall. And on top of that, this had much more width on the inside, so I had a lot of room to be able to put my pack next to me, next to my sleeping pad. So this definitely has more room uh, for the head and the foot end. This definitely has more room in the width. So it's kind of a tie, right? Um, kind of depends on what you're looking for. And then the last thing is going to be uh, simplicity. How simple are these tents? Now, both of these tents have a lot of bells and whistles. They both feature the dual vestibules, the peak vents, the magnetic toggles, things that honestly, I don't really care about. I've hiked thousands of miles with tents that don't have those features, and I've never felt like I need them. So that stuff is not important to me. What is important to me is kind of those extra things, how simple the actual tent is, how quick I can throw it on the ground, get it pitched and get inside of it in case I'm hiking into camp late or the weather is bad. And for that, because the offset solo uses this extra pull, uh, because it's a little extra thing that I have to carry that I could possibly lose or break, um, I feel like this tent is not quite as simple as this tent is. Um, you know, one of the reasons I started using trekking pole tents was because I didn't want to carry extra poles. I didn't want to carry all of these extra bells and whistles. It's one of the reasons that the uh, tarp tent Aeon Li didn't work out for me because I couldn't stand having all these little extra stays that I had to possibly worry about. So this is a big bummer to me. Um, again, one of the reasons I've been using Z-Pax tents for years is because they don't have things like this. So that was a bit of a miss for me. So as far as simplicity goes, I would say this is much more simple. Now, where I will kind of give a knock to both of these tents are all those little nitpicky simplic simplicity things. Um, number one is going to be the fact that they both have dual vestibules. I don't know why a single person tent needs dual vestibules. Um, the whole point of dual vestibules is for a two person tent. So if two people are laying side by side, you're not crawling over each other to get out you both have your own door. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there, they're gonna say, well, it's for better ventilation and airflow. I can tell you that with both of these tents, I got condensation. Both of them, I had condensation, even though they had dual vestibules, even though they both had dual peak vents, I still got wet on the inside of my tent. And where this was in the Grand Canyon, a very dry environment, and this was on the PCT in the first 100 miles, a very dry environment, I still got condensation because there's still single wall shelters and that's just gonna happen. So I don't really see the advantage to having two vestibules. I'd rather just have one vestibule and a peak vent. So to me, kind of seems like a thing that I would rather not have in either of these tents. Um, and then it comes down to the actual doors. So on both of these tents, you can only roll back one door and then they have either the D-shaped door or the L-shaped door. I don't know why people like doors like that. For me, if I'm sitting in the tent because one vestibule shut, I have to get over to where the door is gonna come up and then I have this angle right here in front of me. I really like to sit in my tent in the morning with a big rainbow zipper door, roll back both doors and get this big panoramic view of my area. Be able to get these beautiful views in the morning, listen to the birds chirp while I'm drinking coffee. And I can't do that with either of these tents because the peak is not as high, because it has that slanted wall. And because this side of the wall doesn't open, I have to sit off to one side and I have to kind of cock my head this way. And that drives me nuts. I can't stand that about either of these tents. Again, if you're a person that likes to sit outside of your tent and have coffee, it's probably not gonna be an issue, but I like to sit in my tent. I like to enjoy the morning and I can't do that with either of these. So that's kind of a knock against both of these tents. And then the last little thing would be uh, kind of a couple little annoyances on features. 
Uh, the X-Men Pro has very, very short guy lines. So over the years, I've had to kind of guy my tin out around obstacles, rocks and roots and logs. And these are really short and I feel like I couldn't do that at all. Actually, I had a little bit of a problem in the Grand Canyon. I had a big rocky area and I didn't have enough guy line to get my stake over the rock. So I had to actually move the entire tent where this has regular size guy lines as far as I'm concerned and I can kind of route this over different things on the trail. I know that sounds silly, but I've had to do that a lot. And yeah, I could swap out these guidelines for another one, but it's just kind of a, a little bit of an annoyance that they have such short guidelines right out of the gate. And then again, I'll keep bringing it up. My biggest little uh, knock and annoyance for that is this little pole. Odds are over thousands of miles, I'm probably gonna lose this or break this, so I can't stand having this. All right, so with all that being said, which tent do I think is the better tent? Which tent would I buy over the other? Again, I could go into all these little, well, this is better than this at this, and this is better than this at this, but it really comes down to those three main things for me. It's setup, it's internal room, because I'm 6'1", and it's simplicity as far as features and setting it up. And even though I think these both have a great amount of room, different in different ways, but a ton of room for a one person tent, because I think that they're pretty simple for what they are, they're lightweight, and they both set up pretty easily, I found the Durston X-Mid Pro to be a little bit better at those three main things. I do wish this was a little bit wider, but I appreciate all that head and foot room for being 6'1". That's the most important thing for me when it comes to internal room. And uh, I think that this set up a little easier than the offset solo simply because I don't have to mess with an extra pole figuring out different tension points. So because of that, I would buy this if I was going to buy a two trekking pole, two vestibule, single person tent. But to be fair, I'm probably not gonna buy either because what has worked for me over thousands of miles is still what works for me. So for right now, I think that I'm just gonna use what I have and not really get either of these. But again, if I had to get one, it would probably be this guy for the reasons that I explained. So which one of these tents would you be interested in buying? Which one of these has the features that you want more? Do you want more overall internal room or do you want more length? Uh, do you like big, vestibules, or do you not really want that big of vestibules? Um, which one would you buy? Leave me something down below and let me know your thoughts. Guys, I hope you're doing well. Hope you're taking care of yourselves. I hope you're taking care of each other. I love you, and as always, thanks for watching.